been using cloth nappies for a little bit over nine months and potatoes moved from breast milk onto solid food, I wanted to do a video all about cloth nappies, my experience with them, the pros, cons and the commonly asked questions. My main reason for wanting to try them out was the massive cost saving aspect of it. Yesterday I sat down and figured it all out. I've used disposables for the first month and a bit of Bobby's life and cloth nappies for the following nine and in that time I've managed to save £811. Now bearing in mind it took me a £324 investment for the nappies and the liners, that's 364 if you factor in things like the wet bag and the nappy bag, I still saved over £447 and after a full year of using them I'll have saved just under a grand and if it takes baby three years until he's potty trained I'll have saved over two grand nine hundred, and that's not to mention the sheer amount of nappies which won't have gone to a landfill because of it. I knew that I wanted to use cloth nappies for baby but I also knew that we were going to be moving into our first home a month after the baby was due to arrive. As it turns out, Potato was a little over two weeks late so in the end we moved into our new home with a new baby and only two weeks after I'd given birth which was incredibly rough but it was the only option at the time so we made do. Because of this, I'd planned to use disposables for the first month or so just because I knew I'd be wrecked, I knew I wouldn't be able to handle any kind of change or additions to my routine. So once we moved and I had a little bit more energy, the plan was to make the switch to cloth. The kind of nappies I like are pocket nappies with poppers. You can get this kind with velcro sides instead of poppers, but I didn't like the velcro versions because they tended to grab the bamboo liners while they were in the wash and then rip them up. And the reason I like these so much is because I can adjust them from a newborn up until he starts to potty train. Now if you have a small baby or a preemie this wouldn't apply and you'd need to get a newborn nappy like this one which has a little popper down the middle for the umbilical cord. As it is, my baby is and was very big, so I went straight into these without an issue, and now, nine months later, I can't really see myself ever going back to disposables. So let's get into the pros and cons. Obviously number one is the huge financial saving. Number two is a superficial point for me, but the patterns make me happy. One of the things I'm very careful about is only to have things in my house which are a joy to use. I've had depression since I was 14 and I was hit with really bad postpartum depression after my son was born. And because of these experiences, I place a lot of value on things which spark joy for me. And putting Bubby in a bumblebee nappy at 3 a.m. when I need to change his nappy makes me smile and it gives me a little bit of happiness at times when sometimes I'm not always very, very happy and that's something which is very important to me. Number three, if you have a good stash, you just don't run out of nappies. This was the main reason why I made my cube nappy shelf. Before I had them all stuffed in a drawer and it meant that I couldn't see when I was running low and needed to put a wash on. But now that I have the cube shelf, I can see exactly what I have and I don't have that problem. I even describe it as easy. But yet last year when it was snowing during December and the bin men weren't picking up the bins for over a month, I was one of the few people who didn't have a massive pile of bin bags which were just nappies piling up outside the door for the foxes to try and get through. So that for me was a big plus. This might just be me, but I found I'm a lot less likely to have punamis. I've had one nappy explosion where there was just poo everywhere, but that happened in the first week of me using them, and while I was still getting used to using cloth nappies. My only issues now are with leaks. If I leave them in the nappy for a little too long and pick them up, I'll get a compression leak. But I've gotten much better at spotting when he needs a change now, after using the cloth for a few months, and this rarely happens. Number five, and this one's huge for me, is how much better they smell. Now, I come from a large family and I'm very familiar with nappies, using them, and that nappy smell that just takes over everything. And this was my worry with cloth. Was it gonna smell worse and I'd have to do extra washing? That was what I was thinking. But thankfully, the smell is not even close to the same. Even with a nappy bucket in the baby room, I can still walk in there and you don't get hit in the face with that really offensive smell. And if the lid is on properly, I can't smell anything at all. And just to make sure that it stays that way, I keep a spray bottle in the wipe drawer, which I just spray into the bucket every so often to make sure that everything stays on the nice side of the smelling field. Number six, and again, this might just be me being very lucky, Nappy Rash is pretty much non-existent now. When he was in disposables for the first month and a bit of his life, in that time he had really bad nappy rash at least twice. But since then, he's had what could technically be nappy rash, but was really just mild redness and not the full-blown, itchy, nasty-looking rash. He's had that once. Again, this could just be my experience, but since then I haven't had to make any nappy cream. When he was born, I made a special nappy cream with all kinds of special ingredients, and since then I haven't had to make it again because 
it just doesn't need to be used. Now that I've raved about the pros, let's talk about the cons because there are some cons and this won't be for everybody. Number one is the upfront cost. There's a lot of trial and error with these, finding out what kind of nappy you like, do you like pocket nappies, all in ones, there are a few different kinds to try. I knew I wanted to try the pocket nappies just because they gave me the option to add or remove liners and get the kind of absorbency that I wanted to, but then I ran into the problem of what kind of liners to go for. I was lucky in that my sister is very experienced with cloth reusables in general since she makes them, and I was able to pick her brain on that, but even then I still had to buy them slowly in small bundles over 13 months to space out the cost and make the investment a little bit less of a punch to the purse. Even then, I was still buying some after a few months once Bobby had arrived, just to build up to the ideal stash of nappies, which for me is about 35 nappies. Number two is the extra washing, and by extension also having to handle the dirty nappies. Like I mentioned before, the smell is nowhere near as offensive as disposables, even if you have a poopy nappy in the bin. It's all mostly a smell of wee, but still, it's not the kind of thing you fancy doing all the time. But now that I've got a routine and a large enough stash of nappies, I can space out the wash to every two or three days, and this isn't really a problem, and doesn't add a noticeable burden onto my workload. But at first, when I only had 15 nappies, that was a nightmare, because I had to do a wash every day, and make sure that they were bone dry in less than 24 hours in a house that didn't have central heating or a dryer. Now that I've got a decent stash, that's not a problem, but at first it really was. Putting together the nappies does also add a bit of time, since you have to fold it, put the liners together, but to be honest, because of the patterns, I enjoy looking at them so much that I don't really mind this step, but for some people, this could be something that they really wouldn't appreciate. Number three, it will change the clothing size that the baby fits into. The nappies add a lot of bulk. Since Bob is crawling around at the moment, I actually love that since he's got his own personal airbag, but it can make things like leggings or trousers a little snug, so you might have to go one size up to accommodate for that. Number four, it does change how you approach the holidays and going away in general. If I'm going out for the day, it makes no difference to me since I only need to make a few changes to the nappy bag, like making sure I have a bottle of water, a wet bag with me at all times, and the cloth wipes. But if I'm going on holiday, I need to make sure that there's a washing machine there, suitable washing powder, and that they don't mind me washing the nappies in the machine. Some people get around this by using disposables while on holiday, I get around it by just not going on holiday. Number five is just the judgement you're going to get from other people. As someone who's been using reusable sanitary pads for over five years, this doesn't really bother me. If they're not paying my bills, I'm not interested in their opinions. But you are inevitably going to run into somebody who is going to act like you're giving the child a plague by using washables. On the flip side, if you do dabble in cloth nappies and use a combination of disposables and cloth nappies, you are going to get that parent who is going to act like you've killed the last polar bear by using disposables. So just bear in mind that this is something that might come up. One con which I haven't put on the list is the potential for staining. I was worried about this when I bought them since it's poo. There's no way those white nappies are going to stay white. And if this is a worry for you, what you can do is you can get nappies which have a black inside instead of a white instead. But most of my nappies are white and have stayed white because once I figured out how to wash and dry them the right way, I didn't have any issues with staining. My washing routine goes like this, and bearing in mind it does vary a little bit from person to person. Everyone's got their favourite routine. What I do is, once nappy is used, I take the liners out and drop the liners and the nappy into a bucket. I add a spray if I need to, and once the bucket is full, I go downstairs, throw them all in the wash, and put it on two cycles. First is a quick cold wash, just to wash away any solids down the drain, and the second, with a generous scoop of washing powder, is for the final thorough clean. The kiss of death for stains when it comes to poop and cloth nappies is very, very hot water first thing. Not only is that going to seal the colour into the cloth, it's going to wreck the waterproof fabric over time. If you're concerned about this, then one of the things that you can do is to have two buckets, one for the liners, which you can wash at a high heat, and one for the nappies, which can be washed at a lower heat without damaging them. As some of you know, I make my own washing up liquid from Conkers normally, but for the nappies, I use regular washing powder, it's not something I want to experiment with. If you do this and still get stains, don't worry, it happens, especially with newborn baby poo, then you just need to sun bleach them. And sun bleaching is exactly what it sounds like. You just put your liners and nappies outside in the sun on the washing line, or if you don't have a washing line outside, you can even put them on the windowsill inside. And at first I was a bit skeptical that this would work, but it really did. And I haven't had a single stain since, even though I live in England where there's really not much sun to begin with. I don't want this video to drag on too much, so instead of adding another 20 minutes, I'm going to write a blog post to go with this video, which is going to cover everything like the brands I use, the ones I like, the ones I dislike, where I bought everything, and frequently asked questions that you might have. 
If you like this video and you want to be kept updated with any new content that I'm releasing, the best way to do this is to follow the mailing list and that's going to be in the description box. I hope you like this video and I'll have a new one for you soon. Thank you.